Welcome to a special NEO live stream broadcast. I'm thrilled to be here in Austin to launch the US brand, the US market. I'm Annie Wekeser, the head of communications for NEO in the US. And over the next 30 minutes, I'll be your host. We're excited to share our vision for autonomous vehicles. I'd like to thank our live and virtual audience for joining us today. If you're watching us from around the world, please feel free to join the conversation on Twitter, hashtag NeoLive. And now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce US CEO of NEO, Padmashri Warrior. Padma? Thank you, Annie, and welcome, everyone. I'm very excited to introduce NEO to our US audience today. We are coming to you live from our amazing NEO space at the South by Southwest Interactive Festival in Austin, Texas. Um, so I joined NEO in late 2015. We used to be called Next TV. We're a global startup with talent that's distributed worldwide, starting with China, UK, Germany, and of course, the United States. In the US, my talented team is headquartered in Silicon Valley in San Jose, California. And I'm thrilled to let all of you know that we are working on autonomous vehicles that we will be launching in the US market in 2020. Although we're a very young company, we've accomplished a lot in a very short period of time. In just a few years that we've been around, we have worked on bringing the best of innovation from the automotive industry and combine that with leading edge technology from the technology industry. And doing this uniquely allowed us to break and set many world records with our products. Right behind me, you will see an amazing product, our supercar that we call the Neo EP9. We introduced the EP9 to the world in November. And this car is now the fastest electric car in the world. Just recently, this particular car set another world record. It drove itself around the circuit of the Americas track right here in Austin. Not only did it drive itself, it reached a peak speed of 160 miles per hour with no driver. We have a short video that captures this unprecedented achievement from Neil. Let's watch the video. as a company started in 2014 with the idea that we wanted to build a global startup, tapping into the talent distributed around the world to change the experiences we all have with vehicles. We embarked on a project to upgrade an existing supercar to incorporate additional technology elements that would allow it to drive without a driver behind the wheel. Obviously, the EP9 is an extremely sophisticated vehicle to begin with, so we were able to tap into a lot of that technology and augment it with high-precision inertia measurement units, GPS antennas, and additional compute power so that it could replay with extremely high precision a track at high speeds. While I drive the reference lap, the car is learning everything that I'm doing. We try to find the track limits with GPS, and so we go out and map what we know is the inside edge of the track and the outside edge of the track, and we have those as visual cues in our data. And then what we do is we go out and drive a lap so the car can actually learn and see where the human would drive the car. And from that data, try to as best match what I'm doing with the actual car's position. speed very capable car. It's an amazing car, it's a beast if I may say, and there were many associated challenges with making sure that it's able to follow the track 
that we wanted to follow. When you calculate commands every 2.5 milliseconds, you have to make sure from one calculation to the next, the transition is really smooth and we don't provide very aggressive maneuvers at very high speeds. We were trying to push the limits of the vehicle and trying to push the limits of our software and we found those limits and as part of that we went into an oversteer condition and the oversteer condition just caused us to spin out. We buckled down, we pulled the car in, we found replacement parts, we had people fly in with spare parts and we got the car out the next afternoon. seeing today is three engineers and the team that they're working with going sleepless for four months, pushing themselves and pushing the technology and the vehicle to its limits. Sure that took your breath away. It did mine. Um, what I'm most proud of is the fact that the team came together, our worldwide team from all around the world worked on this project. And by the way, this is the same team dedicated to change your mobility experiences in the future. Uh, to tell you more about how we worked on this product, I would love to introduce to you Rashad Youssef. Rashad is our software product management lead at Neo US. Rashad, join me. Take it away. Thank you, Padma. How amazing that was indeed. Hello, everyone. It was just November, as Padma mentioned, when we announced the NEO EP9 and immediately it conquered world records and became the fastest electric car. And we didn't stop there. We set our si sights on a new goal. We wanted to make it the world's fastest autonomous vehicle. It took three engineers in a very short period of time, in just four months, the team wrote the code and tuned the algorithms on a test car in California, went to the UK and tested for five weeks in extreme weather conditions until the vehicle was ready, and then came to Austin, Texas, Cota, Circuit of the Americas, where it completed a lap in two minutes, 40.33 seconds, achieving a maximum speed of 160 miles per hour, setting a new world record for the fastest autonomous vehicle. We're very proud of that achievement, but we went even further. One of our own engineers, Aaron Bailey, completed a lap in two minutes, 11.3 seconds, setting a new record for a production vehicle on that track, reaching a maximum speed of 170 miles per hour. These achievements allowed us to prove that autonomy and performance can coexist. And that is exactly what we're bringing back to California to work on our products. Thanks, Rashad. Thanks, Rashad. So one of the questions that I've been asked is, is this the technology that you will um, see, or is there similar technology in the production car? Sure. Um, 
the actual technology that we used in the EP9 does not translate directly to the products that we're going to build for our consumers, but certainly the lessons learned and the hard work put into it not only build our confidence that we're going on the right track to build the right product, but also directly apply to the technology choices that we'll make for our consumer products. Makes sense. Remarkable. Well, we'll now take two minutes to move to the next room to hear from Padmashri Warrior again, um, a little bit more on our US vision for autonomy and to unveil the car of the future. Please stay with us.